Yeah, I'm Brandon Bowers with Bowers Shrimp Farm. So currently, um, I'm working on an R&D project here. I was employed, I was I worked with Reed, my brother, and uh, we've raised shrimp for the last couple of years. And um, we're trying to intensify and become more environmentally friendly and try to produce on a year-round basis. And so currently we're working on this R&D project um, to, to grow potentially indoors. So one of the things that we have, that the, one of the biggest problems we have currently in the production world um, in, in an open air, open pond type setup is that it's very seasonal. We can only get two crops out a year and then so um, at the very most and we can't do even the whole farm that way. So hopefully if we can move to a, an intensive or a high yielding type um, setup, we can produce year rounds and produce a higher quality product uh, on a, a same quality product, but produce the, the larger product on a year-round basis to where we can be more consistent and more steady and then eventually have uh, um, uh, moved to uh, a more all-natural product. So currently, we've only been going about 30 days and, um, and we, in order to complete the cycle, uh, we'll probably go another month and a half or so until we can get all the dynamics figured out. There's lots of flow characteristics we have to figure out and um, water movements, um, how, how um, if, can we actually go deeper can, or do we have to stay at a certain depth um, to where we can be more impactful uh, when we build our structure. Well, the first go around, we've had some challenges. Um, you know, we're, we're dealing with uh, environmental conditions, so right now it's really no different than if we don't have the stable conditions we need in a building. Um, so we're not as the shrimp are there, they're not growing as they should, um, but we will, uh, so it's being successful. If we can make all the changes and go to a full flock setup, that's our success the first round. We not, we're not shooting for high production numbers the first round. We're trying to see um, cost-wise what it takes for us to actually move the flock and is it sustainable, and then after that we'll work on perfecting and being more efficient with the production side of it. Yeah, so the difference between what I'm doing here and what we do naturally, so you have an open air pond, and that is what they call a clear water system, where the algae, algae, the algal system, and the sun drives a lot of the photosynthesis, which cleans the water up, and you have a lot of bacterial interactions with the soil itself. Here in this system, I'm a 100% bacterial dominant system, so I use bacteria to actually clean the water up and create the ideal stable condition. So I've always had a passion for some type of animal husbandry. And so I knew I wanted to do something as far as raising an animal. Um, and in this business, if you're not passionate, it's just not gonna work out. Because there's lots of long hours and lots of different things that if you just, if, it's, if you're looking for an eight to five job, it just doesn't work out. Um, and so, but I'm the type of guy that I like to intensify. I like to dig in deep and figure out what is going wrong and then fix those problems. And this is why I've moved to more of a scientific side of the, of the culturing to where we can deliver that, that, that superb product year round instead of just on a seasonal basis. So when you're, when you're involved in aquaculture, it, it, to be honest with you, if you have animals in the water, it never ends. You can get, if there's a thunderstorm comes in late at night, then you have to, somebody has to deal with it. You have to make sure that you, you have power, your tractors are running or whatnot, and same thing with here. One of the biggest disadvantages with this system is that since it is bacterial dominant, there's, you have to have a lot more mechanical aeration in this pond. So if I lose power, I have minutes to respond versus hours or maybe an hour or so to respond on the farm. So the response time is much more reduced. So we have to have backup generators and all these other things. I have all this foresight so that we don't have a hiccup where we stress the animal. Um, and so, uh, so you're always involved somewhat. So there's times that I'll get out here in the morning early or I'll get out here later, depend on what happens, but then I may not get home until 9 to 10 o'clock at night or even later. Uh, it it's really just depends on um, is, everything go is everything happening um, in the pond that needs to. Um, the animals will not forgive you if something gets stressed. They will die and then there's no recovery. Absolutely, um, I, I, that's the whole driving force behind this is that we, 
Um, you know, as, as, as labor issues continue to be on the rise and, and the amount of skill that it takes to run this farm, um, the idea I'm trying to go with this is that we can intensify um, or, or have high yielding um, quality product coming out, um, but then, like I said, again, produce on a year round basis. Um, and so that would be the, the shift where this would be more run like a plant instead of like a traditional farm. And then, so obviously, um, if it's the concept is, is, is phenomenal, we just have to produce the pounds. And so we would obviously, we would build the prototype, come up with the design, and then build another prototype that's actually closed. And then, if that's successful, then this may be the future of aquaculture.